so was able to attend the OSPOs for Good Symposium, where we uh, got exposed to some of the uh, digital public goods alliance work that was being done. Uh, our OSPO launched uh, about a year ago or so, and we are building out our uh, inventory of open source projects uh, across the federal space and within the agency. And once we found out that there were similar inventorying uh, projects being done using things like publiccode.yaml, uh, we started to try to align the federal standards that we're following in our agency with the international standards that places like Germany and Italy and the United Nations and the Digital Public Goods Alliance have put out. So uh, we're here to, to learn. I have some members of the team that are here with me who joined the OSPO recently. And uh, we're we're looking forward to learning and hopefully contributing in the future. Fantastic. Thanks. Jonathan Starr. Good morning. Uh, I am Wisdom Focus. I'm the program manager of the Open Science Open Source Science Initiative, uh, where we connect open science researchers with open source developers. I also work a lot with other projects doing um, deep tech, uh, deep infrastructure for the scientific enterprise. Uh, with regards to this group in particular, I'm very, we're building something called MOSS at OSI, the map of open source science, where we're trying to catalog and collect data on, um, when I'm feeling ambitious, I say everything, uh, everything in the digital knowledge and research ecosystems so that we can build relationships between people that work on the projects, people who are using the projects, the field of research in which those projects are used and critical, the dependencies between the projects, the papers that projects are used to publish, the papers in which the projects are used, uh, uh, and, and so much more. I get, the list just goes on and on. So we're trying to build all that out. Uh, and this feels very related to trying to figure out how research software is related to the advancement of the SDGs. Uh, and all of this, I think, stems back going to David's comment, I think, is a large systems problem, which is how I approach it as well. How how does what we're going to do here help us in the fight for sustainability for open source software and research funding, things like that? Great. Thank you. Michael Downey? Yeah. Hi, everyone. Uh, good morning, good evening, wherever you may be. Um, Michael Downey here from the United Nations Development Program uh, and our OSPO, where we are the international development arm of the United Nations, uh, work in over 170 some countries, um, doing many things, uh, and including most recently trying to bring uh, under, better understanding of open source to countries to help build their open source ecosystems uh, at national and local levels to accelerate their progress toward the SDGs. And so I'm very excited about this group's potential to, to both raise awareness of the SDGs in the open source community and hopefully be able to bring uh, countries and other public sector uh, organizations who are learning about and starting to leverage open source uh, to become better stewards, uh, you know, co-stewards and investors in, in the open source ecosystem, again, as a sustainability play and uh, really a, an empowerment play so the people there can uh, help take control of their digital futures. So thank you in advance to all of the work that this group will be thinking about and doing. Over. Perfect. Thanks. Co-leader Ruth Akega. Yes. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Ruth. I'm based in Lagos, Nigeria. Um, and I think my I had talked to David about this, um, my interest around this group and this work is um, I've been involved in a lot of open source work in the past few years. And I think um, it has all revolved around doing social good um, with open source and helping, um, you know, African developers um, use open source as a career step stone to leverage, like to improve their careers. So I think a lot of the work that I have done um, and like just creating more awareness about the the social impact issues and the you know, infrastructural problems that we face on this side of the world and just helping open source communities be more um, aware of these issues and also um, connect their work together. So I am really interested to also co-lead this with David. So interested. 
and uh, curious to what would you know come up with. Perfect. Thank you, Ruth. Sean Goggins. I'm Sean Goggins. Um, been around Chaos for quite a long time, since the beginning, actually. I maintain a tool called Augur uh, that's used for gathering lots of metrics. And I'm just really excited about uh, this space because I see it rather related to some of the other uh, public and uh, research spaces that uh, I'm curious about in open source. So thank you. And Perfect. I don't know who. Are you going to go? Okay. Oh, no, go ahead. I don't know who's next. Or do you call uh, it Matt. Out? Matt. Hi, everybody. Uh, Matt Germanprey here. So honestly, I was thinking about why I'm most interested in this. So obviously, I've been around the Chaos Project for a long time, but I'm really curious how uh, like the process unfolds by which we can understand metrics as having an impact on SDGs. Like, where is it easy to make this connection and where is it difficult to make this connection um, and i'm not sure how this is gonna work I, I, like i'm not saying it won't work but like how it's gonna unfold um so i think that's really what i'm most interested in right now at the moment curious about that too matt <laughs> <laughs> this is an unwritten story uh, isaac malarski yeah, uh, my name is Isaac Malarski. I'm a U.S. Digital Corps Fellow uh, here at the United States uh, Federal Government. I work uh, for uh, under Remy DeCosmaker's team uh, here at CMS, and uh, we're uh, undergoing the effort of uh, um, creating the first uh, OSPO in the federal government. As Remy said, we're about a year into the process. Um, I actually used to uh, be um, uh, one of the main maintainers on the Augur project. So I do have a history with uh, chaos, but uh, in terms of the main reason for my uh, be, being a part of this group, uh, it's uh, I think it's important to encourage, uh, you know, a, a co collaboration internationally and, uh, you know, especially in the open source space. Awesome, welcome, thank you. Paris Lucas. Hello, everybody. Um, Paris Lucas, Durham, North Carolina. Um, I've been active in the Linux Foundation on other projects for um, five or six years. Um, I was in an activity over this past weekend um, that had a lot to do with um, SDG and a lot of the challenges around it. And um, I'm just here to learn more about it and how we can possibly I'll apply it to the fashion industry um, because the colleagues I were talking to were in the fashion industry. Cool, interesting perspective. Uh, Cassie? Yes, thank you. Um, yeah, Cassie Gionza, I'm based in Berlin. Um, yeah, so why I'm here, so I've worked as a um, humanitarian aid worker for quite some time um, and then used like tech open source to as a aid delivery. Like, um, and that like probably we could talk about a bit more later. And currently I work with World Health Organization in the Digital Health and Innovations Department. Um, and then, yeah, so why I'm here, of course, like this uh, metric or measuring of impact is what um, a lot of us are really interested in, especially in a lot of this uh, like tech for good space, um, because there's not as much robust um, research or evaluation that's been done yet, such as like, what is the ROI on investments on these things? Or like what, um, yeah, what's the effectiveness of these interventions? So really here to learn from so many of you who have a lot of experience with metrics. Um, and yeah, and maybe I could offer some perspective from the international development and humanitarian perspective as well. So thank you. Perfect, thanks, Cassie. Uh, Dine Kopelovich. Hey, I'm, no, it's, I'm Dina Kopelovich. Uh, it's spelled funny. I am a USDC fellow also working with Isaac and Remy over at CMS. Um, I am just starting to learn about 
OSPO, and I'm here just to take in and learn as much as I can about open source and how what it can do for the world. So very excited to be here. Perfect. Welcome. Don Foster. Hello, I'm Don Foster. I am part of the Chaos Project. So I'm the director of data science for Chaos. And I had several conversations with some some folks at the FOSSI conference on this topic, and I found it I found it kind of interesting. And I I don't know that I'll attend every every meeting, but I also spend a lot of time uh, running around to conferences giving talks about chaos and chaos metrics. And so this is a this is a hot topic, and I think people ask a lot of questions about it. So in particular, I wanted to better understand the the goals for this group, which I saw was on the agenda for today. Awesome, thanks, Don. Um, fellow OSPO director, Allison Kittinger. Hey, Allison. Hello, yeah, good to see you here. Um, I'm Allison Kittinger. I am the Open Source Program Office Manager at UW-Madison, and um, I, I'm here just because I'm really interested in how um, these things intersect. We, at the Data Science Institute where I'm situated, we have a pretty close relationship with our sustainability office. The Data Science In Institute is a sponsor of the sustainability symposium that is happening here um, next week. Um, and so I, I really am interested in um, how we can advance this topic locally and, and how, you know, globally in a, in a context like this that we're thinking about how um, these UN SDGs and sustainability and open source all kind of come together and um, help each other and, and how chaos is interested in, in measuring and interacting with these things. So, yeah. Great, thanks. Elizabeth Barron. Hey everybody, I'm Elizabeth. I'm the Chaos Community Manager, so I'm here in that capacity to support this group however I can. Um, but on a personal uh, personal note, I have been in open source for about, I don't know, 25 years, and I've, like Ruth, done a lot of work on the open source for social good side. And when I was at GitHub, I was on the social impact team, and it was really curious to see how um, people were using open source for social good. So I'm very interested to see what comes of this group and how the impact that um, this group can make through chaos. Like, I feel like my worlds are colliding here. So this is great. Great to meet everybody. Awesome. Thanks. Uh, Rhea Farrell Shalnut. Hi, thanks. I am Rhea Shellnot, and I am the compliance manager at Hewlett Packard Enterprise, but that's just my day job. I am very interested in sustainability issues with open source. So I've been a longtime fan of the chaos project and the metrics it collects and taking it from there to sustainability in the wider world stage through the sustainable development goals under the UN are really interesting and i'm just curious to see what kind of intersections are possible i'm very intrigued by github's for good first issue platform or website what they have to highlight the development goals and projects that may align with those and so here to learn and see what connections i can draw perfect thank you welcome uh savannah c Savannah, are you there? Can you unmute? Put a note in chat. Savannah did. Yeah. Oh, okay, great. Um, then Yiga. Well, hi everyone. Um, my name is Yiga. I consider myself an open source advocate and I contribute to the chaos community. Um, I've been involved with SDGs for a really long time, say, seven to eight years between seven yeah seven to eight years i would say um before transitioning into tech um i'm really passionate about it and i just love to see how all of this you know align and we use tech for greater good so yeah thank you fantastic thank you welcome um did i miss anybody Has Paris Lucas gone? Yes, I think Paris okay. went. Okay, great. Um, well, then 
Um, we have yeah, Cassie Winter, already interviewed. Winifred too. I I'm just looking at the list. Oh, if, if I did call on anybody, please. Uh, hi, Winifred Young. Um, I didn't see you there. Yeah, can you introduce yourself? I believe Winifred, Winifred has left the building. No, there. Oh, I just I'm think here. he's hard to hear. Yep. Yeah. Hey. My name is Winifred Young, and I live in Lagos, Nigeria. I think I just entered, so I think I'm seeing what city you live in. So, yeah, Lagos, Nigeria. Yeah. Is there any other thing? I'm a software developer, backend. Yeah. Okay, sorry to put you on the spot. <laughs> Thanks and welcome. Um, okay, let's jump forward. Um, thank you for that. It's exciting to meet and connect with, with all of you. Um, Cassie had offered to do a deeper dive into the UN SDGs and the specific um, targets. Um, so Cassie, if you're ready, um, take it away. Do you need to share or... She should be able to share without any trouble on this Zoom. Then yeah, I'll I'll share. Um and then I would really like this to be more of a discussion than like a one way um like a one way presentation from my side. And then yeah, so let's get started. Let me see how I can Okay, can you all see my screen? And then is it big enough? Okay, yep, great. looks good. Yeah, great. So um, I believe I'm given 20 minutes and then I really want my presentation to be done in 10 minutes because there are probably like 50,000 um, explanation of what an SDG is out there. And, and then they probably do much better job than I would ever do. Um, So yeah, so, but then I would really like a, quick overview of what it is. Um, and then if there's any like interest, probably like give you a little bit of glimpse into how do this like international development professionals uh, do metrics? Because I like from the one, um, the first meeting that I've joined, I've noticed that how we think slightly differently. So I was hoping to explain like, how does uh, like our tools, so to say, to set that. Um, yeah, so very quickly, like uh, some background. So SDGs, like Sustainable Development Goal, it it was first introduced in like 2015. Um, and then the its uh, predecessor is called like a Millennium Development Goals. Like some of you might have heard that or so. So Millennium Development Goal is the image on top. Like it had eight uh, goals and then SDGs, it has 17 goals. And then um, here I tried to put down like some different papers, like compact, all sorts of uh, things that had led to SDGs. But I think what's important is that in 2015, this was actually the first time in the human history that we ever had uh, some kind of common goal for the entire world. Um, again, like that's kind of debatable because these are UN member states and not every country in the world are UN member states actually. So that's uh, that might be like a bit debatable. And then um, SDGs, it, as I said, it has 17 goals and then like easy to think of it in like three different levels. Um, and then I've heard like people think of it in different levels. And then, um, and then 232 indicators, will, which I will like talk about a bit more like after. Um, but I think what's really important is that all of these goals are quite high level and then like very much interlinked with each other, which makes it like harder to come up with a metric or like meaningful metric or indicator. Because uh, as you can see, like when so certain things are extremely linked, it's really hard to like uh, come up with uh, one indicator or several indicator that, and then um, visualize or show the relation, how it's all like interdependent with, with each other. 
um, but that's sort of the nature of international development that we have. So I think that's also important to mention. Um, and then um, three levels, like one is more on the structure level. So it does have a goal target and indicators, I believe. Um, and then and then also like other people call it like the donut model as in like, okay, on the very low level, like on the very, not low, the foundation level, we have the goals of a biosphere, like a clean water, like life on life in, under the ocean, like being great. Um, and then like societal ones and economy, like, yeah, related to like human prosperity and that sort of thing. And then um, this is like just an example, like so sustainable development goal one, it's uh, something about like no po poverty or like eliminate poverty. Again, like very lofty, very high level and extremely ambitious. Um, and then it does have like several targets and then such as like by 2030, we want to eradicate extreme poverty for all people everywhere currently measure that people living on less than $1.25 a day. And then, um, so this target like 1.1 is linked to indicator like 1.1.1. So the third level, that's the like indicator. So that's like, so how are we going to be measuring that? So that's uh, on the structure level, that's the three levels that um, SDGs are like broken down into. And then, And then um, I think it's also important to measure, uh, mention some things about the reporting. So first of all, all the like SDG reporting, this is uh, voluntary. So not um, um, yeah, by like each government or so. And then the idea is that not just the governments, but also all, all sorts of civil society, different like UN bodies, like NGOs or like any kind of really civil society, like Chaos Foundation, uh, sorry, Linux Foundation, for example, is meant to be the stewards of all the like SDG indicators and then like a reporting um, to be like participate in it. Like that's the idea. Um, and then spoiler alert, like none of the SDGs are currently on track to be achieved at the global level. Um, however, like I found this wonderful um, like uh, SDG target and how many countries are not meeting this, like uh, broken down into some certain um, way of classifying countries, but uh, just very high level. So a lot of um, like BRICS countries like uh, are making significant progress. So for example, in 2015, when we just introduced SDGs, they were like below the world's average. Like in 2024, like they are actually all above the world's average. So we don't know if they progressed or the world kind of worsened. Like it's hard to tell, but uh, that but that is what it is. And then also, um, East and like Southeast Asian countries are making like significant progress. And then countries like uh, that have made the most progress are like Penang, like like Bhutan, Cambodia, Indonesia, Qatar also like Saudi, Togo, and like Uzbekistan. And then also like uh, things that we look at are certain like countries that, that are um, incorporating SDGs into like long-term planning. Like, um, so for example, like this is also interesting to look at, like certain countries have introduced like SDG bonds, like that's like Benang and like Uzbekistan to sort of, um, attract like foreign investments like linked to SDGs. So that's um also like worth looking at. Oh uh, yeah, so it's all like voluntary. Um but one place where this like political leaders do present this is that uh HLPF, which is like high level political forum, which is a UN like event where they come together to to present how well the country is doing on this. But this is all voluntary. And then, yeah, just like, uh, as I just mentioned, like, uh, how are we doing? Um, 
so we are not doing really well um so like as of now we are probably like only the 12 percent of the sdgs and the targets are currently on track and then the only improvement that we had seen since like 2015 was like in the sdg 9.c.1 which is uh so nine like which is under like industry innovation and infrastructure and then in like one indicator level which is like mobile network connectivity like there we improved and then also in the sdg 17.8.1 um which is the like partnership for the goals and then there for some reason we have put in like internet connectivity in there so um, like again like why is that indicator there like not under um sdg 9 like i don't know but it's there and then um since 2015 we actually have worsened in quite few areas so sdg like 1.1.1 which we saw earlier like poverty and then sdg 4.1.2 which is like quality education and then 4.1.2 was something about access to elementary education so that we had worsened like it dropped since 2015 the number of kids like all having access to elementary education and then um, same for like SDG 4.8.1.1, which was about sustainability and then 12.3.1, which is the fossil fuel subsidy. So given that this is happening, the current landscape is like whether we should, ex uh, there are discussions happening, um, including just like two weeks ago, like um, on whether we should extend this like SDG agenda to 2050 and then that would like align well with the Paris climate agreement um and then like as that is being discussed like people of course like uh think that should we also include some other agenda topics so for example in 2015 no one like thought about AI and then now everyone wants to think about that and then think like that should be somehow reflected here and last but not least, I think it's also um, like important to share that the forecasting to achieve all of this, um, how much money it would take, it would cost to like meet all the SDG. I believe that's like around um, one to four trillion USD. That's the projected. It sounds like a lot of money, um, but it's actually like depends on how you look at it. It's actually just like one to four percent of the global GDP. So um yeah, so that's like bit of bit of a of a high level overview of like SDGs. And I see that there may be some like questions. It was just where to get the like more detailed information. Like when you're talking about the lower sub levels. Um, so the, I believe the best place would be like either DESA or the United Nations Statistics Office, which I can drop the links. Um, but then like if you want to look at how each like government is like reporting or implementing in it, there are like several different like publications that different governments put out too. But like high level, if you just want to see indicators and such, I think it would be the the DESA, yeah, which I can drop the link. So yeah, um, if we yeah, any other questions that we have? Is there dynamic tracking of this, or does that meeting that you talked about the HLPF um have a report or something every year that's yes, released? So Technically, yeah, so like here, um, so I, yes, so this one was, so the picture on the, like a lower left thing, that's a cover of a report from like 2023 on, and then that's where I got like uh, what I just said about where are we at now? Like what have we, like wh which of the targets are above, um, improved and then like which of the targets like we worsened so yes there are um annual like publications on this 
is does the report go into detail on what are the factors that they think are helping either make things better or make things worse e yes so in like few years ago of course like everybody mentioned COVID-19 right like uh, due to COVID-19 um kids are not getting education like yeah um but honestly like not as much like of a detail that we would be interested in um but i think that's also a really good like segue into because i just brought like two of the toolboxes and like international development people's like framework so one is like the log frame and the other one like is a theory of change so um a lot of this like SDGs or a lot of this like international development um like sort of mindset like a paradigm like comes from the like comes from this uh way of thinking um which so like log frame and like TOC they're actually like very interchangeably used but um, theory of change became like really popular since like 2000, which is that like you start with the like a long term change, um, and then like what you what would be needed for that change, and then that's where like this like preconditions like like that people list are there, um, and output is the lowest level with like a goal being the highest level. So how we think about is that like uh, the arrow going up to the goal is like why. And then like we also make an arrow going down as like how. So I, I'm pretty certain that I wasn't in the room where people were deciding what should be the su sustainable development goals and the targets should be. But, but then like when I looked at their um, goal and a target and an indicator it's like okay like they mapped it into a theory of change because i'm pretty sure that like education is like pretty standard on here's how you think about a very complex challenge usually like or like wicked problem and then how would you break that down and then um that often so this is what that like often looks like you know like log frame format which is like the goal being um, like internally displaced people in this like particular region have improved livelihoods. Uh, like to us, this is like as um, broad as like eliminate poverty. Like uh, how would you do that? And then often like in that goal, there's like multiple strategic objectives. Like, and then, and then like this you know, improve livelihood, like a, this like particular project or perspective decide look at the incidence of waterborne disease among IDPs. So IDPs are internally displaced people. And then like the immediate like result being they have increased access to adequate water supplies. And then, and then they have improved their hand washing practices, probably like a lot more immediate results. And then output that's like, okay, in order to, for them to have better access to adequate water what do we need to do like okay we need to have community water boards establish water points like they need to have better access to water and such and then how do we improve their hand washing practices it's like okay people need to have better knowledge of hand washing and i'm sure like that output gets broken down into an activity which is like we do hand washing campaigns we tell we host like seven meetings where we show people how to wash hands. Um, and then we also like deploy hand washing stations. Like uh, we, we deploy 50 hand washing stations to 50 different uh, meeting points and such. So that's a bit of how much, how like international development project metrics get set. And then um, a lot of times the metrics are set at the output level. And then that's what we call like indicators. So yes, I I hope this was um helpful enough and didn't like add to more confusion um or like put people into more depressive state of mind. I really hope. Um, but yeah, I see a hands up from Jonathan.
the opposite. Optimism. There's a lot of things we can do to help. Uh, right. So lots of thoughts. Let's see. So I'm going to assume two goals for this group in particular, one of which is to determine which of these SDGs are currently being helped by software, where software is playing a role, and then determining to what level. And then the other goal would be to determine where, what, which of these goals could be helped by software but aren't currently. So we can maybe inform people what software needs to be developed using your hand washing example. Maybe there could be software that helps teach people how to wash hands. Uh, yeah, so to determine, I think that first one to like see what the impact of software in some of these goals uh, is, we're going to need to know what the other measures are. Like, is there a like Gini coefficient that says, hey, as the coefficient goes up, so these four goals go down in success rate right? and vice versa? Or are there other metrics that are actively measured to and, and correlated with success or failure of a particular goal in a particular area? Mm, not extensively or not that like I know of like as in well enough um but like as I was prepping for this uh there are a lot of um artic like academic like research that's been done on this because this is like such a attractive topic for people that are into some kind of systems theory or yeah or how like to show how things are interlinked but then um there is no like direct mention of softwares but there are direct mention of connectivity and like internet like a uh, number of people who have access to internet the number of people who have access to like internet with like less than x amount is there another potential metric that i think can be measured that's outside of software like the, the degrees of separation between a citizen and their local government, things like that, that we might be able to put next to software so we can determine whether or not like SDG is succeeding or failing because of software or because of something else. Because if we just do software in a vacuum, then software is going to do everything. True. Yes. Um, maybe another like thing to think of, like is that, um, so as like a, international development like perspective if I were to so no project is just like purely digital but then it's like okay like digital to do xyz like digital um like a classroom so that uh, kids who cannot like who can who have hard time traveling to school can learn um like kids who cannot like go to school because of the school closure due to COVID-19 can still learn like all that sort of thing and then um like technology like including both hardware and software are often like thought of as a like enabler at that level not not necessarily like as a direct um output that's awesome so, contact thank you yeah 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 so so i would not so that that's just to like say not that like software is unimportant but that's why you don't see that on the like sdg level indicators and such because like you cannot really like make an indicator about enablers are there sorry i have lots of questions are there okay. any other hands up before i keep asking uh are there other groups exploring other metrics to help determine what's making these things succeed or fail? Um, like probably every single like a development economist in the world. <laughs> like, uh, yes, yeah. Um, like, yeah. Mm, so the one that I think of as like most um sort of hot right now are the people who won like Nobel economics prize like in 2000, either 12 or 13. Um, like Esther Duflo, like Aminata Sen, and then there's a person in like Stanford that's doing a lot in health. Um, so it's all so it's all like people who are trying to measure the the like social goods innovations impact. Like how do we do that? And then and then there like people are using like like the RCT like random control trials to show like 
So has this like intervention really helped or not? Um, but it's all like ongoing. Hence why I said like honestly in our sector, um, like I'm I guess I'm in like digital and like development like that section. But um, honestly speaking, we all say that there's not yet robust um evidence for us to fully justify like yes, uh, technology digital does like help with um international development problems that we have. I'm trying not to talk about technology, other other things besides technology. So we can put technology next to something else. And, and last thought, uh, uh, thinking maybe uh, getting those researchers who are actively building these things into this group to talk about how they're using software to do the research themselves uh, might be interesting. Mm, yeah, so the, Okay, in that case, like the one that immediately does come to my mind are the like Aminata Sen and Esther Duplo and um Michael Kramer. Like yeah, those people. Um, but I'm sure like if I spend more time, there will be like way more people as well. And I'm I'm sure they're just most uh recently famous people. <laughs> For having won like Nobel Prize in in economics. Can Cassie, I see the, uh, oh, there was a ahead, chat. Is what I was gonna say. Okay, Remy. Yeah. So some of the indicators that are linked to the targets seem like they have like specific stats that are associated with them. Like I know that poverty levels and some other things like there's a pretty high chance that the federal government does publish some of these statistics. Is there a, a like a data set resource or something like that that says like which indicators are being tracked already somewhere? Yes, I believe um, uh, Michael dropped some links. Michael, do you want to come in and then like talk about the UN stats for everyone? Yeah, Remy, I, I just dropped something in line to uh, one of your comments there as a reply. Uh, but the UN stats.un.org um, has something they call the, uh, what do they call it? <laughs> the uh, country profiles um, for each. They have, they have a data portal. And under that data portal, you can go into a specific country um, and see what they've reported. And in theory, you can download data sets uh, like as CSVs and things, but I don't know how comprehensive or easy they make it, but it's definitely there where the data is available. Um, so looking at the U.S. as probably a, a good example of uh, reliably reporting data uh, compared to some, at least, you know, the bulk, um, you can actually go through and go to the indicators that they reported on. Um, under each SDG and kind of filter it down that way. Um, and then further back up in the data portal, um, they also have some other views if you aren't interested necessarily in a specific country and want to look more cross-cutting, uh, you can kind of slice and dice it that way as well. Cool, thanks. I'll yeah. keep an eye on chat. I didn't want to take up too much time. I know we're, we're getting close to the top and there's a big agenda. Thank you much. Yeah, well, we're actually running up against the time. Um, I want to be respectful of everybody's time. Cassie, thank you. That was that was amazing. Um, great presentation. Thanks for everybody's questions. Um, so um, Ruth set up a, another Google Doc where we can start talking about our scope and our goals and, and maybe continue this dialogue asynchron asynchronously um, and ask some different questions and start to, you know, go down the rabbit hole <laughs> and really start hashing this 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 stuff out. Um, I think we have some just some basic um, it's really high level at this point, but feel free to add anything and we will we will start um, you know honing in on on our scope. And this is all you know first draft. so don't think anything is set in stone. We, we want everybody's opinions and, and we want we want this to be something that we can um, reasonably do um, in a year and present something at the UN conference and um, I'm really 
I really think it's important that we're we're building towards something that can be applied um, that that we can make an impact. So, uh, um, that's that's my mindset. And but we can we can use this space as an open dialogue, um, and then maybe as we get more mature, we'll we'll create a GitHub repo modeling, perhaps after the DI DEI badging initiative or something along those lines. Um, but this is again all all draft. Cassie, thank you so much. That presentation was really eye-opening and I have so many thoughts. <laughs> um, Jonathan, your questions were great. Um, really, yeah, I have a lot of similar questions um, and I think we can use this document to go down the weeds. Are there any last um, thoughts? Ruth, do you, do you have anything you want to say? No, nothing much for me, but like, thank you, Cassie. That was really helpful um, as well to me. You can learn more about the SDG. Um, but yeah, like this document is open for anybody to also like drop in comments or um, suggestions. All right. Well, we're over time. So thank you all and I look forward to more exciting discussion next week or two weeks from now. Thank you, everybody. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Take care. Take care. Bye.